these four subarctic plenties are really getting it to be too big to stand a greenhouse so what I'm going to do is move them out these four potatoes that were grown in a pot and then transplanted they didn't uh, survive either because they were transplanted or possibly because I put the uh, plastic over the top of them to protect them and then we had that heat wave so it might have cooked them by the way they didn't survive so I'll uh, just put the pots on top of uh, what's in these uh, tubs already so they'll sit at the top here next to these potatoes which are doing okay so they'll get watered regularly so I'll put them out here and see how they do right they're in what I need to do is put some uh, longer stakes in and uh, support them but I can do that another day because at the moment it's roasting out here so I'll not mess with them today I'll just water them and that's it but uh, yeah, at least that's done and the greenhouse feels a lot uh, tidy now that I can walk down the centre without trampling over tomatoes now I've got a pot of these peppers and these aubergines because they really need to go in pots but it was a nightmare trying to do anything in here so uh, that job's done. Right, well I've tied up these tomatoes. I'll uh, tie them up a bit more as they grow a little bit, but they're not going to grow much bigger than this, so uh, that should be fine. The potatoes are fine as well. I've just given these a feed, and I've potted up all the peppers and aubergines, and everything in the greenhouse was watered yesterday. But I didn't water anything too much because I'm going to give them a feed this morning. But yeah, everything seems to be going okay. Was, these three tomatoes were yellow at the start. They seem to be doing okay now. I mean, they, it's yellow at the bottom, but the new growth is all okay. So I think it was just because it was sitting in that uh, small pot initially. Same with this one. It's uh, yellow, but it's actually reached the top. It's got to the stage where I've actually got to pinch out the top. And we're only at the beginning of June. <laughs> and it's got uh, tomatoes on the trusses. This one. And the first week, week of June, the sun golds have started producing. The first tomatoes, you're always like, do I show them off or do I eat them? <laughs> but yeah, uh, things are on track. Yeah, I've got tomatoes trusses are coming not filling up with tomatoes so uh, yeah pleased with the, what's like going in the greenhouse but once I put this feed in it's a case of get out because it stinks these two cucumbers are indoor cucumbers the other one was a bit of a runt so I didn't bother with that one and same with that pepper so those two are going to get composted but these two when they grow up uh, like I did last year they're going to go up a rope up here up to there and then I will uh, make them go along this uh, wire and the same on this side. This one will go up here. Now it's going to have a bit of a fight with this tomato but I'll have to deal with that. I might get it to go up along this middle wire. So uh, we should have a decent crop of cucumbers as well this year. If I don't drown them this year, we'll see what happens. This uh, was the area that was mulched heavily and uh, just removed this uh, bit of mulch from this area, that metal piece is just a nice border for the moment. It's only temporary so I can put the sweet corn and the squash in. It's uh, kept the weeds out, it's definitely kept the weeds out. The bind weed is creeping in but that's alright. I had to put a little bit of bind weed out of here but not too much. And uh, compared to this bed that, well it's still had the carpet on it but you can see what's happened even with the carpet. And this is one that was mulched with wood chips, so uh, major difference. So the next job is to plant the sweet corn, which is basically dig a hole, drop those in and put the squashes around it. So uh, I'll not film that for now. I'll bring you back when it's done. Right, I've uh, put in the sweet corn and the squash. So I had 17 sweet corn plants, so I put them in a block of 4x4 four four and had one little one. And I thought, well, I'll let it live. So this is uh, just an extra one over here in this corner. I had uh, five butternut squash walnuts, so I put two in this corner, 
so that one is coming this way the other one is going that way and then in that corner I've got one coming this way and one going that way and the fifth one I've put in that corner and pointed it so it comes in down the middle so it should form a ring round or a square round the uh, sweet corn to keep uh, critters out hopefully <laughs> we'll see but anyway it's done and planted right it's getting late in the evening now and uh, I've uh, made teepees for the cucumbers and the gherkins so uh, this teepee is cucumber bedfordshire prize and the gherkins are in this one it's got the green top we'll see how that goes so I've just uh, watered these in a little bit but it's about to rain as we can tell by the dark skies and it's going to rain all day tomorrow so these are going to get a good watering anyway and then once it's done that I will come in on uh, Monday and give these a mulch and these uh, goji berries that look like dead they've started to pick up and they're leafing out I was a bit worried but it all looks all right now I mean some of them are still looking a bit uh, sorry but it is coming out so uh, we'll see these figs that were outside have uh, started picking up I expected them to be a little bit later because uh, they were turfed out of the greenhouse but compared that to this one and this one that were in the greenhouse and this one they are a lot further along so obviously being in the greenhouse for that, that little bit longer helped now these uh, asparagus plants have been sitting in these pots for so long that uh, they're root bound. Oh, there's a slug there. I'm going to get him in a minute. They really should have been in a bed by now, but I've changed my mind where I want to put it. So that bed has already got something in it. So uh, what I'm going to do is pot them up into bigger pots. And uh, next year, when that uh, bed that's now got the roses in it, next year it will be the asparagus because when the roses have gone dormant I'm going to move them and then I'll put the asparagus in so I'm just going to put them into a bigger pot and uh, then keep them going for a bit uh, longer and then I can put them in the ground later this uh, autumn not uh, doing it the right way or at the right time but then life is like that you can always get what you want I'm sure there's a song about that <laughs> What I've got in here is some of my own, well, some of uh, the compost we've made here and the uh, bit of uh, that gypsum mixed in. I haven't got any perlite here, but that's what I would have used, but I haven't got any here, so. Quite a nice, healthy plants. Some of them are a bit weedy, but some of them are all right, so. And of course, when you're growing from seed, you don't plant every plant, just see which ones survive and pick, pick, pick the best ones right. Right. Put a little bit off it. Okay. and just uh, put compost around it and uh, that's it really it's not the ideal situation. I'd like to have, uh, have these in the ground back in April, May, but didn't happen. Doesn't matter. We'll uh, see how they go. And I'll water these in when I've done the others. And then uh, I can uh, leave them somewhere safe in a cage because I don't trust the pigeons. Good old broad beans actually loaded. So I'm gonna have a good crop, but uh, we've got our friend's black fly coming in. So uh, it's a case of, uh, I think uh, these, these ones have just about had it. So this will be the last crop and I'll pull them out. The outdoor cucumbers are doing fine. They've had this last few days of deluge. So they're looking a bit uh, yellow, but that's because uh, they've been swamped. But uh, now they should uh, romp away. And we've got little cucumbers. And the one in the greenhouse. Now this one is doing fine. And we've got little cucumbers starting. This one 
is about half the size. Don't know whether it's the shade or a slightly healthier plant, but everything else is the same. So I uh, don't know, but uh, we've still got the problem with white fly, but uh, I'll see what I can do. The job for today is to move all these pallets out of the way so this hedge can be cut. I'm going to put these pallets over there on top of the strawberry bed. These strawberries I've had here, I'm just going to take a few more to take runners off it, but mostly you think, oh that's a good one, but you think you've got a good one and then when you pick them it's sort of been half eaten or mushy. It's a right mess. It's weedy, it's been like this for years, so uh, really I need to take a few runners off these and uh, just uh, grub out this lot and get the strawberries into a new bed. So uh, this bed needs to be covered up with plastic. Then I can put those pilots on top of it and uh, this will be done. I bought myself a new toy, these uh, lawn shears, because uh, I uh, got a bit fed up of uh, crawling around and uh, cutting uh, the weeds the normal she is so this will uh, and let me just do it standing up which uh, saves my back so let's unpack it and see how it works Seems to be doing the job. Good, and well, I'm pleased with that. I mean, it stands up to my uh, <laughs> chest, so uh, yeah, it's good for reaching uh, and uh, going through that because I don't fancy crawling on my hands and knees while cutting this lot. Another piece of glass has uh, come off, it's fell off the roof of the shed and fell down here and smashed or broken anyway. So uh, I've got to replace that. Fortunately, there's only bits of newspaper and things on the top there. And uh, it's obviously made this compost wet, but that's not a worry. And there's a little bit of uh, water that's come off and uh, run along the bench, but that's uh, not an issue. There's nothing here that was uh, going to get spoiled, apart from some soggy newspapers, but that doesn't matter. That's the third piece along here that's come off. So I'm uh, not happy about it, but uh, I'll fix it and then uh, next year all this is coming off and I'm doing it properly. No more amateur and cacai building. I'll get it done properly. Whoever did it, obviously did it on the cheap with whatever was available, but sometimes you've got to do things right. I can't be fixing the roof every five minutes. So that's another big repair job, but that's for the winter. Hello. I've... Uh, had a lot of other things to do over the last uh, three months and unfortunately it meant that uh, I couldn't uh, get much done on the allotment and as you can see behind me it has absolutely gone berserk with weeds and it's a few things like putting up these strawberries I've not had time to do I've managed to grab the odd hour in to come in and uh, water things but really I've not had time to deal with the weeds and they've got bunkers like the cucumbers have been taken over. They're still producing but if they've been fed and watered regularly they would have done a lot better. The greenhouse is absolutely chocker with tomatoes and peppers. Well these are little ones but uh, aubergines are doing fine. So uh, I've tried to do a little bit, but uh, obviously the weeds have not had a chance to get in here. But uh, I just uh, come in the odd hour and watered things. I uh, had a go at this bed the other day. I mean the outside tomatoes, it got some nice tomatoes on them, but <laughs> the bindweed has gone up it. Sunflowers are doing okay, but again the bindweed has been uh, having fun. 
and these raspberries have absolutely been overtaken by bind reed and thistles. I entangled the uh, bind reed from this uh, blueberry, seems to be doing all right, but everything else has been absolutely overtaken by bind reed and other weeds. The rest is uh, just as bad. Well, this area was bad anyway, but uh, yeah, I mean, this. <laughs> Uh, yes, the apple tree again. I've not uh, really done anything to it. I've not fed it. I've not watered it and you can see the result is we're not getting the best apples that we could and we've had that long dry spell. I've got yeah, rotten apples but the others seem to be doing all right. There's a few good eating ones. Well the star of the show are the uh, sweet corn <laughs> Even the sweet corn hasn't escaped uh, pine weed, but seem to me this one is still not uh, quite as brown, but some of them look okay. So I'm going to try a couple of these and I've grown some uh, butternut squashes around it. I've got some little ones, but not certainly not anything like what I've got on the other plot. But uh, the pumpkins on the other plot got a bit more care and attention and I weeded around them and fed them. But uh, these have not really been looked after, but you can see. What's it they say? One year's weeding. So one year's seeding, seven years weeding. I think I'll be busy for the next seven years. Uh, but it is what it is. Sometimes other things in life take priority. But it uh, looks a lot worse than it is bindweed. I mean, you can just pull it off. You know, it just looks a right mess, but it comes off and then you're back to, you know, you just have to pull out the other one, but most of it is just it's just trailing along so you can just just pull it pull it up so it looks a lot worse than it is and uh, it would only take me a few days to really get back on top of it but uh, yeah it does look really bad but I'll get on top of it I just want to see with this sweet corn how it's uh, actually done so if I peel it back you can see how it's seeing as I've taken that one off I might take it off and take it out and cook it up and see how it goes. Well the top looks it hasn't been pollinated properly but the rest of it looks alright. So uh, I'll take him home, boil him up and see what happens. But uh, good grief, that's a lot of uh, bind reed. Well, this stuff up here, it just comes straight off that. So that's not a problem. Just going to spend a couple of days pulling bindweed. Ugh. Not the best job in the world, but it's got to be done. Yeah, I mean, once once you pull the bindweed off, a little bit of this. That is not too bad, is it? So yeah, it does look a lot uh, worse than it is because bindweed going up along things, it's not a worry. It's when it roots and you can't get the roots down the bottom, but we can deal with that. Of course there's things like uh, brambles and nettles that will also give me a hard time and flies trying to get up my nose but uh, I'll get there, I'll sort things out. Now that I've got the other stuff sorted I can come back to the allotment with a clear conscience and not have to be worried about other things. I can uh, concentrate and get this stuff done. Right, well I uh, relented and went and bought myself a new hedge trimmer because my old one just couldn't get it repaired. Unfortunately, the badgers have been under sweet corn. As you can see, they've uh, knocked uh, them over and uh, eaten the ones that were ripest. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, put some sort of uh, fence around it. They've uh, done my neighbour in and they've taken all of his sweet corn. <laughs> but since it's getting late in the day, what I'll do is I'll uh, take a couple of the good ones and I'll come in tomorrow and sort out the fence because it's getting late in the day and I need to go. How annoying.